Hello everyone. Welcome to Go VM Lab VMware scenario based interview question and answer series. As we have mentioned many times that this series of lectures going to help our learners and professionals preparing for VMware L3 or senior level job profile interviews. Now in this particular series of discussions we are actually focusing upon some of the very basic scenarios of virtual machine resource management and where we are trying to touch upon some of the very basic scenarios are related to virtual machine memory management and virtual machine cpu management so now let's continue our discussion further and let's see that what problem statement has been given in the question number 5 of this particular series of discussion so now in this question number 5 as you could see that we have been given two different scenarios so let's try to understand these scenarios before we go and look at the problem statement given in this particular question number 5 so now on the left side we have a scenario number 1 so let's call it as a scenario number 1 so let's say this become our scenario number 2 so what do we have it here in this particular scenario number 1 so we do see that we have a esxi host and this esxi host is actually running two vms vm1 and vm2 and both of these vms have been configured with the 11 vcpu each pretty easy pretty straight forward scenario what do we have it esxi host is having a two vms running on it each of the vm is configured with 11 vcpu each and when you look at the physical cpu configuration we do see that our esxi host is actually having a one socket and two core per socket configuration so that is a one socket and this socket is actually having a two core configuration that is the scenario what it looks like now let's look at the other scenario which is scenario number 2 in scenario number 2 if you really see that almost it looks exactly same like your scenario number 1 where we do have a two vms running on this esxi host and this esxi host is having a one socket and two core per socket configuration so that is also looks exactly same so your physical configuration looks similar the only difference what do we see that in scenario number 1 and scenario number 2 is the vcpu assigned to vm 2 so if you really look at this particular scenario the only variation what do we see between scenario number 1 and scenario number 2 is that in scenario number 1 we do have a vm 2 which is configured only with one vcpu whereas in scenario number 2 the same vm2 is actually configured with two vcpus so your vm is actually configured with two vcpus in the scenario number 2 and here it configured only with the one vcpus that's the only difference what do we see that now let's look at the problem statement here the questioner says that in scenario number 1 there are one vcpu assigned to each vm as we have rightly discussed whereas in scenario number 2 vm2 is configured with two vcpus in which scenario vm2 will perform better or provide better cpu performance so now this particular question says that in this scenarios you have to look at this vm number 2 and you have to figure it out that in which specific scenario scenario number 1 or scenario number 2 vm2 will perform better or it provide better cpu performance for your applications which are running inside this vm now this is also one of the very basic scenario of your vSphere configuration vSphere infrastructure or virtual machine infrastructure and we really hope that you would have come across with such kind of basic scenarios in your day to day job so please take a pause here and try to find out the answer that vm with one vcpu will give you better performance for the application running inside that vm or vm2 with two vcpus assigned to it will give better performance welcome back now we really hope that by now you would have find out the answer of this particular given questionnaire but before we go and try to reveal the answer for all of our learners let us share a one of the very common answer what we have received from many of our learners after posting this particular questionnaire on mini uh, govm lab social media communities and forums now one of the very generic answer what we have received from many of the learners is that vm2 will give us better performance so vm2 will give us better performance than vm 
two in the scenario number one, and the reason was pretty obvious because VM having a more number of vCPUs, which means better CPU performance. So their explanation was that in this given scenario, this VM2 will give better CPU performance than VM2 running in the scenario number one. And the reason was that this VM only have one vCPU assigned to it, whereas this VM has two vCPUs assigned to it. And we know that if any system is having a more CPUs assigned to it, it means that it has a more processing speed and which means that it will give you better CPU performance. That's the explanation what we have received from many of our learners when this particular scenario was posted on many social media communities of QVM lab. If you also have a, some other explanation or if you have find out your answer, then please post your answer in the YouTube comment section. So we'll also get to know that what are the other explanation learners are having it for this particular scenario. This is the time for us to let's go and try to find out the answer of this given scenario for all of our learners. Now, just wanted to reiterate once again that this segment of discussions, we are not talking about conceptual discussions. We are not talking about what is CPU virtualization, how CPU virtualization works, how your vCPUs are getting mapped to physical CPUs, how your socket core combinations are coming into the picture and impact your virtual machine performance. We are not talking about those concepts because we assume that as a VMware professional, you would have gone through some of the VMware training and based on that training, you should be having understanding of these basic concepts. These are the basic core concepts of this uh, virtual infrastructure. So we assume that you have that level of understanding and we are just giving you this scenario to evaluate your understanding level that you understand the CPU virtualization at what level of depth. So that is a pre-assumption here. Now let's come back to the question again. And the answer of this particular question would be that in this particular given scenario, though your VM2 is configured with two vCPUs, still the VM2 configured with one vCPU will give better performance as compared to VM2 having a two vCPUs. That could be a surprise to many of the learners that it actually, you know, give you the impression that ideally VM having a more number of vCPUs should be giving a better performance. But then the reality in this given scenario, VM2 running with one vCPU will give you better performance than VM2 running with two vCPUs. And the reason is that you really need to understand how CPU scheduler works. Because there are some limitations in this particular configuration, but in this particular configuration, the way CPU scheduler will work, it will always have a one core available for the execution. And that is the reason VM2 with one vCPU in the given scenario will give much better performance than VM2 with two vCPUs running in this scenario. The reason is that it won't be getting complete CPU cycle from the underlying ESXi host CPU scheduler as when it requires CPU cycles. But for this particular case, all the time VM will be getting its 50% CPU cycle and because of which every time it's getting 50% CPU cycle and that is the reason the performance will be much better where in this particular case, because we have a lack of uh, a physical core and that is the reason there would be some wait time and because of the wait time, the performance will degrade of that particular virtual machine and that is the reason VM2 with one vCPU will give much better performance than VM2 with two vCPUs in a given scenario. Now, if you want to know much more in depth that what is the CPU scheduler is doing, what is that vCPU, pCPUs are doing and how this entire uh, socket core combination is, is being laid out to give the best of the best virtual machine performance, then we would strongly recommend you either you revise your vSphere basics or CPU virtualization basics or reach out to us and probably we can help you or guide you to understand CPU scheduler, CPU virtualization much more in depth. If you have interest in learning VMware more in depth, not from an administration perspective, but from the architect or consulting perspective, then join our VMware vSphere Zero to Hero Data Center Expert Program. This particular program has been highly rated by all of our learners. 100 plus careers have been transitioned successfully with our Zero to Hero Data Center Expert Deep Dive Program with the 100% placement record. Now, what are the key highlights of this program? As you could see that it's a India's first 
job ready VMware learning program which has a 70 hours of intense learning with the 80 plus hands on labs 40 plus scenarios would be presented to a learner as a challenge questions to assess their learning. We do have a mentors having a 15 years of experience and the certified professionals. You would be getting opportunity to have a one on one in person doubt clarification session with the VMware mentor and this particular zero to hero program will also preparing learners for L3 or senior level profiles. Now we have transitioned many careers with our deep dive program and you can see some of the feedbacks right here on your screen. These are the feedbacks what we have received from all of our successful learners who has transitioned their career with us. So what are you waiting for? If you want to become VMware expert or want to master this technology, then call us now today on the given number or maybe drop us email on the provided email address. Thank you.